guys, it's Alyssa, and I know this is kind of weird, and I actually really hate the way that it, lo uh, that it looks when you're just looking at my face through the steering wheel, but I'm currently stuck in traffic, and I actually do have a lot of homework to do. I have a test to study for when I get home, and because I'm stuck in traffic, I was gonna get home late to begin with, so today's Writing 101 is actually gonna be done in the car and this, there's an idiot. So also please expect comments on the idiot drivers around me every once in a while just because they are stupid and really don't know what they're doing. Like this guy right here, you can't see them obviously. But anyways, a little side note is that I'm gonna start doing the writing 101s in chapters. I thought it was fitting, I thought it was kind of creative. I'm a little bit proud of myself, so there's that. <laughs> So what's gonna happen is each new segment of Writing 101 that I do is I'm going to have it be a different chapter. And so I've kind of done chapter one, which is world building, and that I'm just gonna close that chapter for right now because there's so much stuff that I could do about it, but I had already planned before I started to do the chapter idea to talk about character creation today. So that's what I'm gonna talk about. I'm going to label it chapter two, Perhaps chapter two, section one, I don't know how in depth I'm gonna go with the characters. Um, but today's chapter is really basically about the utter basics. Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> the utter basics of creating a character. And that's pretty much what they are, their names, what they look like, what they act like, and what they are to your story. Of course, this doesn't really encompass everything that your character is. There should be a reason behind every character you create. You shouldn't create a character for absolutely no reason other than the fact that you like it. Your characters need to have a purpose. I understand that some novels have characters that seem like they're completely purposeless, but every author has a different idea in mind when they're writing a character. And it is not unheard of that a character's purpose is to be purposeless, but it still functions as something to the story. Also, my contacts are drying out in my eyes and it's absolutely horrific. Um, but pretty much the most important thing that you need to start off with when creating your characters is the fact that they need a name. Um, and names are also important when creating characters. You don't want to name your character something that literally has nothing to do with anything. I understand that a lot of characters do this and it's not mandatory, but if you can pick a name for one of your characters that makes sense and that fits the story and describes them, that's 10 times better than if you just name them Bob because you have nothing else to name them. Of course, your readers might not know that you're naming them for a specific reason, whatever it is you're naming them, but you as the author know that. And you as the author and as writers in general, I'm making an assumption here, but should know that you should have so much more in your stories than you ever, okay, I said that wrong. You should have so much more in your head and on your note papers that will ever go into your stories. There's gonna be so much information that you put into your head and have in your head, but a lot of it is not gonna make it into the story and that's just the way that it goes. Same thing goes for a lot of the character things. When it comes to describing characters, you need to have a general description. You don't have to go incredibly in depth. Like, it's really easy to just say she has blonde hair, her hair is thin, it's straight, why are you doing this? <laughs> don't put that in your character sheet. Um, ugh, I hate these drivers. Virginia drivers are the worst, guys. I don't know how much you are aware of this, but Virginia drivers are literally the worst. Literally the worst. It's easy to just say she's 5'4", she has a lean build, she has green eyes, blonde hair, hair thin, usually wears it down, it's long and straight, you know? It's really easy to do that, and that's also totally okay. But if you look up character creating pamphlet pamphlets online, you will often find that they go into tons and tons of detail, like specific tattoos that they have, piercings that they have, birthmarks that they have, other important scars or body marks that they have that mean something to them or to the story. And it's always nice to have those added details to your characters because while you may not get to add everything about your character into the story, you may find that that one little detail about that one little scar that she got, maybe you didn't make a backstory to the scar. Maybe she just had a scar. Maybe. You'll be writing and you find a meaning for that scar and you can bring it up and it adds a little bit more oomph to your story because you have 
that little detail that connects your readers even more to your characters. So you need to have a description of them. You also need to have a general idea of where they come from. Because where they come from largely impacts who they are and how they act. So for instance, if your family, if your character had an abusive father, the likelihood is they're not going to be all that inclined to trust adult males if they're younger. Maybe they are a male themselves and they grew up believing that violence is all right because of this. Maybe their father didn't abuse them but instead abused a sibling and that's just fabulous. Sorry about that. And they watched this violence happen and so they grew up thinking that violence is okay and maybe they just have violent tendencies and have anger management issues because of this history that they had. Now you don't have to go through and write from birth to death. That is not what you need to do. I mean, if you really feel like it, and some authors probably do do this, and sometimes I have the random urge to write a whole bunch about their life. Sometimes I pick specific segments that I just want to write about, and I write about those. But you need to at least have a general idea of where your character came from. It's easier to point in the direction to which they are going when you know where they came from. Plus, as I said, it affects the way that they act, especially like if your character had an abusive father, had an abusive friend, knew someone who had an abusive friend, it's gonna change and shape the way that they act and react. So it's important to know where they came from. Uh, there are characters who don't know where they come from, but at the same time, even those characters, the author knows where they came from. The author knows their backstory. So the author knows how to incorporate that. And of course, for most characters that don't know where they come from, they ultimately end up finding out where they came from. So that's pretty much it for that part. So you need a name, obviously, you need a description, and you need a history. That was smooth, Mr. Infinity. <sighs> okay, um, but also you need dialogue. This is the last thing that I'm gonna cover for today. I hate this traffic, it's absolutely insane. You need to have dialogue. I was in a creative writing course freshman year? Sophomore year. Sophomore year, I had a creative writing course that I took with my English teacher, and we talked a lot about dialogue and character creation when we were in our fiction section. And she mentioned something to me that I will never forget. It was an activity that we did. We were reading The Monkey's Fist or something like that. And we had to highlight all the dialogue and then we went through and read only the dialogue. We had already, this guy behind me is tailgating me. I want you to go die. Um, I'm so sorry guys. <laughs> but we read the story first. We pointed out descriptions and stuff and we talked a little bit about it. And then we went into this activity where we highlighted the dialogue in a different color. And then we all went through and read only the dialogue. And what she, stop it, you're gonna run into me. <sighs> This is so frustrating. Um, I hate tailgaters. I'm just gonna go like 20 miles under the speed limit to piss them off. Don't drive like me, kids. So anyways, so we had to be able, well, you should be able to tell whether or not your character is speaking without saying who it is. I realized that was kind of fuddled in the way that I said it. So basically your character should have a unique way of speaking. Goodbye, I hope you, hit that person. I hope they drive super slow. They do drive super slow. They're driving slower than I am. Sorry. I'm used, I'm not used to having to like cut my rants short. <laughs> um, I am so sorry about this guys. Please forgive me. I probably won't end up doing this again, but I did have a lot to do tonight. So I really didn't have a choice. So please, 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 please forgive me for this. Anyways, you should be able to tell which character is talking without any indication of who is actually talking. So if your character Bob, for instance, says something, perhaps Bob is a witty character and so he just says witty things. You should be able to pinpoint, well your reader should be able to pinpoint something Bob says without you saying, said Bob, or shouted Bob, or he said. You, I think that makes enough sense. But your characters should have a distinct way of speaking. They need to be, distinguishable among your characters and other characters in novels. One of the most important things that you want to do with your characters is make a character that someone is going to remember and enjoy reading about. You want to create a character that is going to be memorable. So part of 
part of that is creating a character whose dialogue is easily recognizable among your characters and among other people's characters, even though it is more important that they're easily recognizable between your own stories. You are not getting in front of me. So make sure that when your characters talk, it's not just flat. Make sure they don't all talk the same. Make sure Bob and his brother and his brother's friend and his mother and his grandmother and his grandmother's grandmother don't all talk the same. They're not all witty. Maybe his great-grandmother is a boring, boring, boring old hag. Who knows? When the reader reads Bob's boring old hag great-grandmother, they'll know it's her talking, whether or not you say, Margot said this or not. So, just a small little recap before I close for today. Your characters need a name. They need a description. You need your history, just so you know where they're going and where they came from. They also need distinct dialogue that can be easily recognizable between all of your characters. It's even better if they're recognizable between other characters, but don't really think about that portion of it. It's more important that within your novel or series of novels, that one character remains consistent in the way that they speak and the way that they act, just so people know who's talking. This does not include character development, because I understand if you start your story off with a 12 year old, they are not gonna talk the same and act the same as they do when they're 25. That's just, so of course there are exceptions to every rule. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. I actually really enjoyed talking about this this week. Um, I am so sorry that I'm doing this in the car and I'm so sorry that I was yelling at people and you had to watch me yell at people. But as I said before, Virginia drivers are honestly the worst. I. I really, really, really hate Virginia drivers. So if you are a Virginian and you are driving or will be driving, watch out for the crazies on the road. Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching it despite all of my tangents. I hope that it gave you something to work with if you didn't already have something to work with. And of course, there are tons of name generators and character generators and personality and appearance and history generators all over the internet. All you have to do is look for them. So it's really not that difficult to create characters and whatnot. So I hope you guys enjoy. Character creation is probably one of my most favorite things to do about novels. So anyways, I've talked for long enough. I will probably have to get over this rant before I can turn off the video though. But leave in the comments below what your favorite part of novel writing is. I'm actually really curious. I really, really, really love character creation and I tend to create characters even if I never end up using them. So what is your favorite part about writing a novel? Do you like writing the plots? Do you like naming things? Do you like map building? World building is a better word for it. I love world building too, but characters are probably my favorite. So leave me, leave me a comment and tell me what your favorite part is and I will see you guys on Sunday. Peace out guys.